Hi guys. Kyle. Sarah. Welcome to West Coast Swing Wednesdays. Hey! It is that time. We are here to teach. Um, our goal this week, uh, this is our last free class before it starts up with our uh, our paid stuff. So yeah, uh, welcome week, back in. We're excited to share with you a concept that really is the foundation of our teaching theory, and that is West Coast Swing the Next Level. Now, uh, if you have trained with us, uh, you will know this concept. Uh, it's never, it never, never hurts to uh, hear it again, uh, or maybe you hear something this time that you didn't hear before. So uh, stay tuned, stay with us, and let us kind of take you on a little journey of how we develop our dance in basics. So let me explain to you really quick how this was kind of assembled in a nutshell. It's not exactly the short, but it's going to be quick. Kyle and I were super, super, super green, new, brand new, our first job over, went first or second, third job over to it was Europe. On a cruise. No, it was over, it was to Europe. And we got invited to one of the Modern Drive, the massive events. Oh, oh. I'm, and I'm they're sorry. like, yes. hey, um, you know, there's going to be like 700 people or five to 700 people at this event. And we're like, cool, we're going to get to show West Coast Swing. We were like 20, we're super excited. We get over there, haven't slept all night, and we walk in and know there's not like, Seven, five, seven hundred people at this the event. event. It, there, there's that many in the workshops. There's seven hundred and fifty people in one like, room. Like, so they have you on this stage, and they have you on a camera. Okay, and... so they haven't warned us about this. So we walk out, and they're like, "Okay, from right here to right here, don't get outside the space. There's a camera right there that's going to be shooting everything you do. And it You're was mic'd like a up. Basketball now we need you like to stay NBA in here. Style, right? We need you to stay in here because there's three hundred people in another room that are watching this and need to be taught as and well. And so they have rotating captains. They have, and all the people coming to the workshops already know how to take workshops like this super big and they're like yo you're gonna have four hours today of 45 minute classes to teach them west coast swing there you go and back in that day like that was an eight week course hour at a time so much specifics taught i literally um lost it and i was like i'm in over my head in over my head and kyle and looked Did at you me just act out in over, <laughs> in my, head. over my head it's kyle like looked at me and he like grabbed my face and he's like I'm like, we can't do it. And he's like, yes, we can. We're super people. And from that day forward, ever since we've been too tired, didn't think we we're going to make something. You know, we always go, we are super people. But honestly, it made me snap out of it and go, okay, so what, no matter what, after they're done with us, anywhere they go in the world, what could we teach that's going to be West Coast Swing? And if we only could teach for 20 minutes, of material, what would it be? Now, this is the day that this changed our life. So we knew that no matter where we go, that people are gonna use six and eight beat rhythm structure, primarily six, the majority. Easy. That's walk, walk, triple step, triple step. Yeah? yeah? Okay. We know that there's going to be someone leading and someone following. And yeah, of course, we know there's always those variations where there's moments building together, but we're in general. What's the gist? Yeah? We know that there is going to be a series of pushes, passes, tucks, whips. Yeah? Pushes, passes, tucks, whips. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that it's going to be slot, right? It's going to be linear. It's going to be in a slot. So we have to just throw this at these people and hope it sticks. Right. So now, what ended up happening is from this moment, it caused us to realize that even if I taught somebody for eight weeks West Coast Swing, they're still gonna be really difficult to get the connection and the rhythm because it's an advanced dance at a beginning level. So pretty soon, this is where the birth of the next level started, 20 years ago, and it developed to where we are now. So we know that we have, how many basic patterns would you say? five. I call five. You've got 12 in some people's uh, thing, but I think for me, um, as long as it, and actually it's really four if you count one of our patterns the same way twice, because you got pushes, passes, whips, and tucks. Well, a tuck turn is kind of a push turn if you're doing or a shooter a tuck. Yeah, or it's a pass. So right. when it gets into the tucking, it can still follow into the same uh, two different groups, okay? So we've got, we've got a sugar push, underarm turn, a side pass, a whip, and a tuck. And really, every other pattern is some form or derivative of these patterns. I don't think we should try and break these down any deeper or spread out the basic concept much more than that. It's simple enough with five. Now, once we have these five basics, we understand those very, very, very well. Now, when we get those in order, we now understand different dimensions within our dance. We've got 
or different pattern structures within our dance. We've got we've got different length within our dance. We've got li different width within our dance. We've got different height within our dance. We've got different rotational times within our dance, and we've got different time orientations within our dance. Now we have those options, but are also done with different handholds. We've got a natural handhold that can be done. We've got right to left that can be done. We've got right to right that can be done. We have left to left that can be done. We have right to left that can be done. We have two handhold, two hand right cross, two hand left cross, no hands, and all the places I can legally touch. So now that we have those options, we have the ability to take the dance and play with it in very simplistic ways. To me, when we take this dance and we try and make it too complex too early, dancers just like, they, they fembot and they explode. Because really, somebody needs to get a chance to try on the dance to know if they like it. And I think many times, things get so complicated, and as you start to layer technique and learn more of West Coast Swing, you need to be able to have a fundamental basic that can still stay true on these higher levels when you're wanting to try different things. And by us going through the dance, it made me go back and test and find the places where I was falling short and find those holes and absolutely be able to keep my integrity in my dance because I started to believe in a structure that gave me freedom. I want to be able to still identify as West Coast Swing, but I want to be able to modernize and change as style and music moves on. And so for us, this has been really instrumental. In West Coast Swing, all of the basic patterns are named after the action the follower carries out, right? So sugar push, the follower comes forward, pushes, moves back, underarm turn, follower goes under the arm and turns. Side pass, pass the side, tuck, follower's body is tuck, whip, follower's whipped from one side of the slot to the other, yes? So for me, a sugar push is a six beat rhythm structure, right? I come forward and back in a slot room and how but that's big, if I lead it. Right. How big my steps are, how small my steps are, whether or not I lead with a heel, lead with a toe, because I want to make a stylistic change, that has nothing to do with my basics. Um, what we, is gonna be in every basic sugar push is six beats, a leader and a follower, a slot and either a push, pass, whip, or tuck, right? That's what's gonna happen in West Coast Swing. So one of the things that we're doing with our, uh, with our program online is we wanna almost, in a way, reset some of you. Uh, not that we need to reset everybody, but having a reset moment kind of ties you back in and lets you reevaluate your basic structure. Um, what I'd like to, for you guys to do that are coming into the, into the series um, is take the beginning workshop. Because if you understand how we develop our basics, it'll make a lot more sense to how we manage the dance uh, through its basic form. Uh, and then as we elevate, um, I work out, uh, I work in this uh, concept um, called model thinking, where I, I kind of, I, I build everything based on the thing previously. So uh, what I like to do is I like dancing as a leader to be um, in time oriented. Uh, I ask for something and something responds and, and happens. Uh, and there's a call to response to everything that we do and a, and a direct feedback the other direction, but that's a much higher concept later on. But if we can build that call to response orientation as a leader, it's kind of learning how to drive, kind of like learning how to drive, uh, not telling you how to drive, but letting you discover how driving is affecting uh, what's going on around you or how you are affected in your drive by things going on around you. So we turn our basics into something that is about us producing pattern structure rather than me learning my part, Sarah learning her part, and then hopefully putting these things together and then them fitting. A lot of times that just is a, it's a separation of parts. Well, I'm supposed to do this. Yeah, I'm supposed to do that. What, and what ultimately and, I think led us to a little bit of this feeling is the coaching that we went through ourselves. We would go to these great masters of the dance and they would have very different concepts and in the lesson it felt great and it worked and then we would go to another instructor te that teaches a complete different concept it would feel good and it would work and we would be baffled like okay well why can't I do both but both of them are saying only their way and so we started to realize okay let's stop finding the differences and let's start finding the common denominators and let's make that our fundamentals what is everybody using no matter what because this dance is so young and it's still shaping itself. And so if we can simplify so that we can create, that's super awesome. But we still have to be able to follow the integrity of the dance and what that is because that's part of what makes the game fun. So for me, followers, I will try working on my basics in many different shapes. 
For me, a basic sugar push in basic, basic form is that I'm ready to move forward and back. I have counterbalance. I could move forward and back at any moment. I am able to roll through my feet, so I'm releasing my feet off the ground with a roll, and I'm able to keep a rhythm going. You know, walk, walk, triple, triple. I have a really good frame that I'm able to manage compression and leverage and steering from, and then I let my leader put momentum and direction into me. And some leaders may give you a lot of momentum with a lot of compression, or may shift or steer you, and that's the fun part, is figuring that out on the fly. So it's important that you condition and train yourself for the unexpected, not to prepare for things to just go one way, because hey, and to me, um, to me, discovery as a leader uh, is one of the best forms of, of learning. Uh, it allows me um, the time to figure out what I've done and see the process and then get feedback in time. So if you, can, if you can learn by putting yourself to these odd, strange positions and, and areas, you'll learn how to manage through them when they hit you on the dance floor. Um, I hate to practice perfect. I like it when things go wrong because it gives me the ability to, to fix myself. Um, Sarah and I always have a saying, practice doesn't make perfect. It just increases your repertoires of ways to fix your mistakes. Because perfection, um is really in the eye of the beholder, and that is so true. You're perfect to me. Yeah, you're perfect to me, totally perfect. All the I way. Perfect. You're just perfect. My mom said I was perfect. You're perfectly Kyle. Perfect Kyle. <laughs> I'm the perfect Kyle. No, but I'm saying like, you know, that image of, look at what just happened with COVID. I bet all of us had a beautifully planned- Summer. Summer. Like what we were gonna do, and so the all best our events you can lined do, up, everything we wanted to learn, yeah, where we were gonna go, and everything changes. And so all you can do is prepare, prepare yourself for the unexpected, and until then, carry on. And so for me, followers, I try not to set myself up for failure by expecting too much out of my leader stylistically Thank or you. to a song. I appreciate that. I, I find that I have a lot more fun when I don't put expectations on any relationship, <laughs> even a two or three minute one. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Much longer than that. Yeah, totally. So um, followers, something that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a couple different ways to practice implementing elements. Matthew Howell? Oh my gosh. Matt Howell, oh my goodness. Matt Howell. What's up, dude? Stop. Okay, so. We would love to see you. Dude, text me after Oh my story. gosh, yeah. we just went through love all of our old videos. You, man. So Matt Howell, who is on right now, was a, with us on the dance team when we first started. The beginning, we all started like, together just for kicks dance team. At 15, 16 years I just old got as bumps. kids. And good to see you, man. we have so many good memories, but it's so funny how dancing is like, you grew up in the same neighborhood. It's like we're your family forever, right? It's yeah. pretty cool. Unless good to see you, man. Yeah, good, good to see you. All right, so let's get back to this. So let's go back. So we've got we've got our, our five basic pattern structures, or we've got our sugar push, underarm turn, side pass, whip, and tuck. We've got multiple different dimensions. We've got our length. We've got our width. We've got our height. We've got our rotation, and we've got our time. Then we have different handholds. We've got natural handhold. We've got right to left, right to right, left to left, two hands, two hands right cross, two hands left cross, no hands, legal positions to touch. Right. So what we can do now is we can learn to build these into our dance as a beginner. So in a simple way, we'll just take a basic sugar push right now and we'll show it a little bit longer. So my normal sugar push would be just this, right? So now if I take that same sugar push and I make it a longer on the back half, I can make it longer on the front half, I can make it longer all the way through both parts. But the problem is, is if I'm already committed to where I'm going to put my foot down on three and I practice that followers, I now am not open to that texture in the same way. And I find that to be boring, totally. right? Because it's one dance. dance. is going to change. We have to find different ways to do this one dance. That's what's West Coast Swing to me. I will, I, I will always be interested is because of that option. And so followers, I want to, I want you to be able to experience that. So the same way that we added length to that point, this could be the same way that we take it away. So I can take a sugar push, just imagine I'm in a smaller space now, my sugar push to becomes shorter. Whether it's on the front half or the back half, I've got a smaller sugar push, all right? But my sugar push is perfect. 
So now we've got the concept of having the sugar push within its length, right? So we know that length can be many, many different things. So play with the concept of what length is in the pattern structure. Now, next, we've got width. So I'm going to take that same sugar push and I'm going to think, I'm going to make this go wider in the framework. Now, I could go wider the other direction too. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Now, is it a pattern I might use? I don't know, but if it shows itself and I know the direction is starting to come in, say I've drawn my follower in across the body a little bit, and as I've gotten here, I feel my follower arcing the space out, I know that that space to draw back into is something I'm used to. I'm not foreign to that action. I'm now aware of it and I can make adjustments to it as I feel it. Not that my follower did anything wrong, I just know how to manage what it is that just happened. So a follower is something that I play play, something I pay close attention to. Kyler, can you go overhead for me really quick? So something I pay close attention to, and you'll hear us talk about this nonstop, is the tracking. By me being able to keep my arm in alignment, I can guide and read how much rotation my leader needs me to have. So now I can feel that steering. So many of us followers were aware of the forward and back connection, the leverage and compression, but you're not paying attention to the resistance that needs to happen in rotation. And this will move independent sometimes. Right, and so many times you'll miss a moment like that. Stay in the overhead, Kai. So many times on this, you'll end up getting this glitch and then you'll follow behind it and I can see that. What I would like is for you to follow in the moment that your feet are catching your frame and you're keeping your body, you pay attention to your body's um, uh, distance from your arm. Not just how much my leader is moving, but I pay attention to this, my dance space inside of my frame so that I have room to make adjustments. And a lot of times followers will either lock this too close in and so you don't allow tethering and you rotate too quickly or there's no response. I want you to constantly be guiding and gauging that. Uh, you can go ahead and go forward. Thank you, Kai. So I am constantly main, uh, maintaining the connection. There's never a time that I'm just checked out on it. And as I maintenance that, I try to use um, my movement to do so, yeah? So I need it moving and active and adjustable so that the connection can feel good while I'm dancing. All right, so we've messed with length. Now we've got an understanding of width. Let's deal with height. Sarah is missing some. <laughs> <laughs> so in this concept though, we can take this and we can elevate this or drop it down. So if we start in our neutral space, Lifting it or dropping it in our body is height differencing, right? So if we can, we're going to start with the drop down into three. One, two, I can lower the sugar push. I can raise the sugar push. Now, depending on what I feel in the music will determine what I do with it, okay? Now, I can do it on the front half, on the one, two, rise it up, compress it down into three. I can drop it down one, two, lift it up into three. But remember, what we're talking about is giving elevation changes, a height change within your basic structure. What about rotation? Now, next one, rotation. Um, we have to be able to give length and take length with this, but how do we turn this? So if I can, I've got rotation that happens in many different ways. So if I think sugar push with rotation, most of the time when we deal with this, we're dealing with it in the center concept, like the three and four area, so that we can A, develop smoothly, and, and B, get back to the next pattern structure Not smoothly. C, like B, yeah, doesn't B doesn't even exist. <laughs> so if we can imagine that we're working with the middle structure here. So if I wanted to turn Sarah rotationally, add three back into four, now I've got five and six to manage the recovery. If we're always trying to adjust this and almost fake out our partners, um, it's not an easy development, okay? So if you can, start out with the simpler ones. To me, the simpler ones are the middle ground. Development in and recovery out. But the middle ground is where we're playing with the dimension on the, on the rotation, yeah? Now, I can take that rotating it right or left. So the first one is rotating it out. Now, this one's going to rotate in to send back out for anchor in. Now, I wouldn't do this on the front end because rotation at the beginning would be kind of weird to go into. Doesn't mean that I can't use it for movement because if I wanted to walk someone in this position, one, two, three, four, there's nothing wrong with that. Ew, so I, that's don't gonna like be, I don't like it. I don't like it. I know, but, but it really comes down right to... It really comes down to this, that, interpretation that in those looks, moments. That, like, I'm not a big, here, here. Oh, is the leader backing up no, and doing no, a walk? No, this is my irritation. I'm sorry. I can't help it, guys. I just wear this dance on my body way too much not to say anything. Please, do not take two hands and lock me down unless you're going to make a really cool shape or you're on your way to something. If you're just grabbing my two hands like that 
And then you just go like, ooh, 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 a three and four and a five and six. I'm like, yo, I could have totally just danced basic. that whole time. <laughs> just make it a basic. It's a pet peeve. That I'm like, okay. All right, so we understand we're dealing with rotation. Now, where does that rotation go? For us right now, I want you to stick with the three and the four area. Don't go into five and six too much or one, two until you get to more advanced structure. Yes? Um, length, width, height, rotation. What's our last one? Time. So to me, um, time is a real strange one because I think there should be something in the music that helps us kind of divide out of our basic and timing to be able to then draw it back into its natural timing. So to me, it would be something where I would take in delay time one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's still the sugar push. We did adjust the timing, but we were able to do that while still maintaining or preserving the structure that we had within that. Yeah? So, if we can imagine, time is something we can also accelerate. So a lot of times if we did a sugar push, we went one, two, three, four, we could actually start this ending way sooner by accelerating into it. So we've now either added time or we've subtract time. And for me, I like to live in both worlds because there's times that I find I'm panicking for a second. Oh my goodness, there's a break coming. I've got to hit it and I'm in the middle of a sugar push. So it's one, two, three. Oh my gosh, there's the break. And it just happens that I'm able to throw that out and catch that last moment to be able to hit my break. Uh, see, again, I'm going to say this too. Time, I, time listen, extension versus I time. I feel bad for Kyle. It's probably one of the reasons you're so good is because I'm so picky. I'm not good. Yet. Uh, not yet. We're, we're, I'll, I'll get you there, buddy. Oh, I was just going to say I'm great. I'm just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Not really. Um, no, but this is what I'm saying. And, uh, okay, so you're just going to shoot it out like that, but then, okay, I know the break's coming too. So, so if that's a situation, best just let me choose how I'm going to hit it. Like, uh, unless you got a good idea because you're the leader. That was a good idea. I hit the break. Yeah, you know, that's up to me. Like, you've already, Bad planning. it's already too late. Dude. Bad planning. If you're in the middle of a sugar push and you're two beats out. It happens though. Come on. Don't, don't act like you it doesn't happen. You got no way to hold it. Oh down. my goodness. So, okay. So wait, we've got length, width, height, rotation, and time. So we've got those five dimensions within our five basics. All right, so let's say that's 25 patterns right now we've just Ooh. given you. Now, let's say we can take some of those things, we can add two or three different ways of doing each one of them. Now we're at like 75 patterns, right? So math is getting ridiculous at this point. Now we're gonna take right to right hand hold. Same sugar push, one, two, longer. Left to left sugar push, longer. Two hands cross sugar push, that's no. kind of weird. I don't know. Can you go overhead, Kyler, for me? No, no, no. no. Uh, the mics are going out on camera. Views. No, no, they already got it. You fixed it. Oh. They fixed it. So if it is, we'll come back to you guys. Guys, but let us know if the sound is cutting out, please. This would not be something I would usually do in a sugar push. So cross hand sugar push, two hand sugar push. Let me tell push. you, in those creepy 90s, oh. when you would get those, those drunk Damn. creepy old guys that would like oh, bring boy. you in and do that. Oh, the cleavage push. Yeah, you know what I would always do? What? I would just add a little flip, a late flip. Whoa! Oh. That was too close for comfort, honey. Okay, so hold on one more <laughs> time. So, but we could do this. I could do a cross hand, but I would have to elevate and separate. So a cross hand sugar push uh, is there. So discovery, go ahead and flip it back, buddy. Discovery is your friend. Now, um, I'd have to say uh, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, uh, me and a good friend of mine and Sarah's, Jason Calcino and I, uh, went to Robert and I was like, he stole my pattern. And Robert's like, what? I'm like, yeah, he stole my pattern. That's like my they pattern. were both coaching with Robert and they were like, Fighting, they were like <laughs> arguing. He's still like that. Yeah, it was really stupid. So Robert like, but he's like he's brings like, them both in a room. He's like, come over here. You know that you know that illusion turn that I do. He's like, yeah, you guys think I did that? And I'm like, well, yeah, of course, it's yours. He's like, he's like, watch this tape, and he takes out this tape, <laughs> plugs it into this machine, and eats it. <laughs> Sometimes like, it involves the fish in. was this big. Yes. He's and, telling uh, the story. <laughs> Royce and stuff. And so he, he puts it in and he shows me a video of Atlas Griffith, not uh, within a couple of years, doing that same illusion per turn pattern. Uh, and he's like, not my pattern. He's like, every pattern's been done. Every move that you could possibly do has probably been done. Doesn't mean you didn't discover it, but it does mean that it's been done. You so. Own it. 
You don't own pattern structure. But you can discover it, and that's what's fun. When you discover it, you still own it. You you found it, and it still has weight to you because that process of realizing or learning or discovering is empowering. It's also addicting to yeah, me having a pattern. Totally. Having a pattern that I find, I like. I chase that all night long. I, I'll dance all night with a ton of different students, uh, and I'll find like maybe one pattern I haven't done before. I'm like, oh, remember that. And he's like, we're gonna teach you the workshop tomorrow. Save it. Yeah. It's in my back pocket. So I have to say, so hold followers, on. this is very much where I'll find my inspiration. So many times when I'm adding what element I'm choosing to add in pattern work is not based upon the music. Many times it's based upon the pattern structure that my leader took and the texture that, that I use on that element is to the music. So for instance, he just used height, right? So at, in that cross hand, so this lifted up. So many times I may choose to lift up in my texture, in my element. But the texture of it will have a lot to do with the way the music is coming through. And so I want you to start to pay attention to the structure in front of you, the pattern structure in front of you followers, and find ways to fill elements that complement it. It doesn't always have to be the same because I could also add rotation in this very easily and still complement this pattern. But I still get to fulfill what it is I've asked for and not feel like I'm being interrupted. So by discovering pattern structure, it opens us up to a whole new realm of interpretation. All right. So we've got length, width, height, rotation uh, within our sugar so push. Oh, and hands, hands. Sorry, we're in hands. Yes. Could you do a right to right underarm turn? Well, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. We're, we're only in sugar push right now. Okay. Okay. I'm trying so, to speed you along. Can you tell? Oh, I guess so. Okay. okay, so the whole concept here is that I've got I've got length, I've got some width, I've got height, I've got rotation, I've got time, I've got multiple different handholds, I've got the discovery of things that work and the discovery of things that don't work. So when I find things that don't work, I, I have a very small bucket of crap that doesn't work, all right? But I have a huge bucket of things that will work. So instead of trying to put all the things into the don't do that, don't do that category, try and navigate yourself through this space and go, can I make this work? So if you do end up with a cross hand hold, left hand over right hand, sugar push. Could you do one of those right now? So if I had this moment, what could I do with that pattern structure? Sarah, can I use you for a second, please? No, you can't. Thank you. So, so I've got a left over right. Well, I know when I had right over left, I could do that sugar push and I could loop this way. So now I'm gonna go left over right this direction. Well, I mean, I could easily do this one. That's just the repeat to that. Could I still keep it on my right side of my body? I could, that's still the sugar push to my followers footwork and positioning. So I have to learn to keep my follower in a comfort zone that she or he is in kind of used to at this point. This so, is why it's so important to get training in good connection, in good counterbalance, in art foot articulation, in how you manage rhythm moving through your body, how you manage your balance, how you manage dealing with added momentum, those kind of things will allow you to enjoy every kind of different pattern work that comes your way. So if I can, I want to I want to give you the challenge that was given to me once is take yourself through the concept and find five. Find five different patterns within each of your basics. So I've got a basic sugar push and this then I need five more. Mission this week. Okay? And that's just the first stage of this in this discovery. So at all points you're always every one of your patterns is always going to have a sub basic to it. It's going to have to be a sugar push, an under turn, a side pass, a whip, or a tuck of some sort. And if it isn't, it isn't West Coast. Maybe a starter step. Starter step, yeah, but that's still that's a, a pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But to me, it, it, it really defines the dance when we start giving it a value. To me, the dance pushes, passes, whips, and tucks in six and eight count forms. Now, it could get really boring if we just said this was an underarm turn. But what is an underarm turn? It's a management of my follower's flight through time under my arm on the right side of my body. Six beats down. Slide. Right. So mm -hmm. now, if I'm able to produce those things, the other of fluff that's on top of that becomes so the play stuff that I we can just, get away with. If I just ran an underarm turn just with my right yeah, hand, yeah, yeah. If I just ran an underarm turn, and I'm going to do different sizes, and you hopped in, you could grab that technically with this hand, right, or with this hand, and it's still an underarm turn to me, or this hand, it's still underarm turn, or this spike is still underarm turn 
Oh, there's another unearned turn. Oh, I got one more. Oh, yeah? Uh, that's not underarmed. It's not underarmed turn. Not really, because I didn't go underarmed. It kind of is. It's, it's a pass of some pass. sort. No, 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 no. No, you turn the other pass. direction. No. Side pass turns over that no. side. OK. See, you know I'm right. I think. I can't wait. I'm so glad she this is right. recorded. She knows I'm right. I'm so glad this is recorded. So know. so let's let's get back to this. So we've got we've got five different patterns, mm -hmm. multiple different dimensions, mm -hmm. and multiple different handholds. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we start to blend this stuff? I could take a left to left underarm turn a little bit wider. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Still an underarm turn, still the footwork that my followers used to, but I now elevated the pattern structure, but it's not so far outside the box that my follower can't jump on and board. And to a lot of you, that's a new pattern. And so what if you understood when you watch something that it wasn't so intimidating for you to learn because you can go like this. All right, what's a sub basic? Is it six or eight? Because they're calling it West Coast Swing, so it needs to be one of those things. Now we Unless have it's actually a labeled variation because, yo, come on. There's those and thank God. But does it push past whip or tuck? Six or eight? Which what pass? shapes? <laughs> What hand? And if you can look at it that way, it's not so intimidating, right? It's a management skill. Right. I mean, I can drive 10 and 2. I can also drive with one hand, with one hand, with one hand, with that hand, my knee, all these other things. Not that I'm going to lead that way, but it can. I can start to play with this if I discover it and I'm able to ma make these things happen. How many of us get to this position right here? Ooh, right to right side pass. Hand change. We practice it. We know it's there. We know it's options. We know how to produce it. I didn't over yank my follower. I know the skill sets of a of a side pass. So I know the initiation should feel spooling. It should have the rotational initiation. It should follow through to get my follower some timing into that. So even if I'm sitting back to back in the cross hand, I still think that this has to produce what this produced over here before. So I need to make sure I rotate and spool to get her to move. I follow through, get my follower to come around, and I finish the pattern structure out. So it still has the element that my follower understands the side pass part of it. Yes? Now, last bit of these hand holds to stuff is blending our, um, our dimensions. So I could take a normal hand hold and I could take a sugar push and I could go height to rotation. And now I've just changed two elements to give my follower a new dimension. So I could take the same concept and start to build on top of it. So I challenge all of you to take this time and Learn your basics. And if you're by yourself, on. if you're working by yourself, leaders, it'd be really, really cool for you to actually practice doing this and envision taking that hand and adding different elements. And followers, if you're working by yourself this week, making sure that you're choosing at one point, just try this. Do a sugar push sideways in the slot. Come forward, two, three, four, and fill all the elements of a sugar push. Learn to try to fulfill pattern work in different shapes, different sizes, do you add remember, height, add rotation, add width, keep it moving do down you the remember the person? Okay. Do you remember the person that had a conniption fit? The one time I said, okay, hold right to right and turn backwards, now do a sugar push. And they about had, their, their head almost exploded. They, mm -hmm. they, 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 and they were a good like five US Open. They were like, they knew their dance. And just to turn around and do that was, <gasps> was and I so feel like. If any of you go through this, so I've, I've dealt with this with some of my all-star and champion level also. If it is difficult, difficult for you to talk, <laughs> if it is difficult for you to stand in place and without anchoring or stretching or anything, if you cannot go one, two, three and four, five and six, boom, tick, Boom and tick, boom and tick. And if you cannot talk and run your basic rhythm while doing something else, this is your biggest nemesis. I want you to do this in dancing. I want you to do this, kitchen sinks this week. If that's difficult while you're doing something else, I want you to run your rhythm underneath your body. Walk, walk, triple, triple. This will help you so much in being able to absorb 
changes in musicality and connections. When you have that rhythm, like remember the movie Dirty Dancing, the gagoon, gagoon, when that walk, walk, triple, triple is your default and you can move around and keep that rhythm going without thinking about it, you will have so much fun in West Coast Swing and so much more will fall into place. So that is West Coast Swing Wednesday tune-ups. I was going to say, wait, oh. say West Coast Swing the next level. But, all right. <laughs> smooth. <laughs> smooth, Sarah. That is West Coast Swing the next level. <laughs> so once again, five basic pattern structures, multiple different hand changes, multiple different dimensions, all with the ability for us to learn to find our pattern structure and adjust our basics to fit around our musicality. Yeah? So, um, do we have something else we're doing? Um, yes. Tomorrow night, we're going to support our community and finding ways of opening the discussion. Please get involved any way possible right now. Any discussions you see going on in our community that we could help build or in your community at home, um, do it, do it, do it, do it. That's what we're about right now. Please join us and be oh, a part of our membership program. Yeah, Sunday. You can, you can go sign up right now. The new website will launch Monday, but there is um, all of the information is on our old school website right now. And Sunday, Sunday, Robert Royce and anybody who's a part of his Sunday Science, we are going to do a private tour Sunday of the website. Yeah. So Robert's right after, so it. Sunday Science is uh, from our time. We're nine to eleven, right? Yes. So I think he's. We'll probably be streaming it from our yeah. website live also, so you guys will be um, on our on our live stream members page. So once you sign up to be uh, a part of our membership program, you're a part of a Facebook group that we uh, tend to quite a bit uh, throughout the week. Thank you so much for joining us. It is so great, uh, all of you that stopped by and said hello. I always go back and read the comments, and it... It means so much. Thank you to our fellow professionals um, that are popping up and saying hi. Please uh, continue to support your local professionals, your internationally traveling professionals, yes, and also uh, support yourself. Take some time to unplug and smell the roses or watch somebody live the simple life for a minute because it sure helped me with Savannah this week. And uh, we love you guys. Please show up uh, Sunday to uh, Sunday Science with Next Robert Wednesday. So you can see this. You want to take this class? Hop on kylesarah.com. You can register there. If you're going to come every week, you might as well be a member. It's way cheaper. And we do offer a monthly uh, 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 fee so you don't have to do it all at once. We understand that it's a, a big expense. Um, we know. We do. We, we get understand. It. We, we love you guys result. so much, and uh, we will see you all soon. Mackenzie Goodmanson just hopped on. I saw she's doing a really cool thing. Top Chef, that looks really cool. Please support you guys everything that you can. Oh, yeah, the Top you Chef are. thing. Great job with that, Thank Mackenzie. you for being here for us. Awesome. Come sign up. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.